The Walt Tempere Clavier is a landmark in the piano repertoire written by G.S. Bach in 1722. It's a collection of pairs of preludes and fugues in all 12 major and minor keys, with the first in C major, the second in C minor, then C sharp major, C sharp minor, and so on. This collection was so successful that years later, at around 1740, Bach wrote a second book with 24 new pairs of preludes and fugues. Imagine yourself listening to these pieces for the very first time. On each pair, the preludes are intended to establish the key through harmonic progressions and serve as introductions to the fugue. This prelude in C major is the opening piece of the collection, and even though it is technically the most accessible, its harmony is incredibly rich. It is based on a sequence of broken chords that tell a story of modulation between one key to the other. At any given point, we are either affirming the home key of C major or moving on to a new key. We have in this piece only one chord for every measure. Bach will never change harmonies in the middle of any of these measures. So all we need to do is put together the notes we have inside a measure. So for example, in the first measure we have C, E, G, C, and E. And those notes will, will repeat. So putting these notes together, I have a C, an E, and a G. And right there I have the C major triad. And a triad is a sequence of three notes where each note is a third above the other, a skip above the other. And as long as I have these notes in this order, I know that the bottom note gives me the name of that triad. This is a C major triad. So we start uh, with a chord of C major. Moving on to D minor with a seventh, D minor with a D, F up here. If I bring it down an octave, I now have a third, F, A, and the C. If I bring it up the octave, I have another third. So D, third, F, third, A, third, C. That is a D minor with a seventh. And this is in the key of C major because all of these notes belong in the scale of C major. I don't have any F sharp, I don't have any A flats, for example, in here. So this is very much still in, in the key of C major. We are uh, making a, a short cadence in the home key of C major, affirming, uh, uh, confirming that we are in the, in, in the key of C major. So again, starting with the first chord of measure in C major, D minor 7, that brings us to G7. Flat seven up there. G, B, D with the F, the minor seven. We also call a minor seven a flat seven. And the G seven is a dominant chord. Any major chord with a minor seven or a flat seven is a dominant chord. G is a dominant chord of C. Any dominant chord will attract its tonic. G attracts the chord of C. Whenever we hear the G seven chord in this piece, we know we are going back to C major. We are attracting the chord of C major. And this uh, uh, chord right here uh, sits at the end of this short cadence that will complete our exposition, where we confirm that we are in the key of C major. And now Bach will start going somewhere else. We then move on to a chord of A minor, still in the, in the key of C major. And then all of a sudden we hear a D major with a seven. D, F sharp, A, that's a D major triad, with a C, that's a D major with a 7. That's a major chord with a flat 7, that's a dominant chord. We know that every major chord of the flat 7 is a dominant chord, and a dominant chord is a 5 above its tonic, and the D is a 5 above G, so this is the dominant of G. This chord is now attracting the G, but this is a momentary dominant. We're not yet modulating to G, this is just a temporary dominant, and we call this a secondary dominant. A dominant that is a dominant of anybody who is not the home key. And remember, we're still in the home key of C major. So when we hear this chord, that is a secondary dominant, meaning that is a dominant of someone who is not C, who is not the tonic, this is the dominant of the dominant. G is the dominant of C. G is the five above C. So this D major 7 is the dominant of the dominant, dominant of G, and sure enough, it goes to G on the next measure. And after this, we hear a C major, but with a B natural in the bass. The B natural is a major 7. Now we have a 
a C major with a 7th, but it's not with a flat 7, which would make this a secondary dominant. This is a C major with a, with a major 7. And what this does is it makes this chord incredibly unstable. And unstable chords or, or, or chords that um, composers from this period were always um, looking at as chords that needed to be resolved. They were never chords that would establish a harmony, establish a key. So this means, this tells me here that the moment I hear this chord, we're going somewhere else, we're going away from C major. Because if we're in the key of C major, I will never play this chord with a major 7, making this chord so unstable like this. Uh, so the moment we hear this, the C major with the major 7, we know that we are probably going away from C. And in the next measure, we hear the A minor with the 7. second chord above G, we have the 5-7, the dominant chord of G arriving in G, now we have all the, all the elements we need to establish a new key, this was a full-on modulation into a new key, into the key of G major, we modulated into the dominant key, we modulated into the G major key. So again, we, we moved on to A minor 7, or major 9, dominant 7, D major 7, to a new place, to a new area completely different, and this is what we see here. Immediately we see a C sharp diminished 7, C sharp, E, G, B flat. This is a C sharp fully diminished, and a, a, any fully diminished chord is also a dominant chord of this tonic. The C sharp is the dominant chord of a D chord, and we do go to a D chord. measure earlier, we should arrive in D major, but we don't, we arrive in D minor. And that tells me that we are no longer in the key of G major, we are probably going back to C, because D minor belongs to the key of C major, does not belong to the key of G major. So again, measure 12, C sharp, fully diminished chord. functions as a dominant chord, it attracts its tonic. And the leading tone to C is B. Leading tone is the half step below the tonic. So any chord that has that B in it, whether it's a G chord or the B chord itself, functions as a dominant to the chord, it attracts that tonic. So here when we hear that B diminished, we are attracting C major. And we arrive in C.
very interesting happens. We hear that F sharp full diminished. And the bass with F sharp jumps over the G onto the A flat. And this is a very strange movement to do, especially in this period, where composers were, were so careful with voice leading and how their, 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 their voices were moving. Um, going from F sharp to an A flat without go passing through the G it is a very surprising sequence of chords. And you, if, if you're familiar with Gounod's Ave Maria, uh, Gounod, the French composer who wrote an Ave Maria, which was a very famous melody on top of this prelude, in this moment in his arrangement, he just couldn't fit the melody on top of the sequence. So he had to fit in an extra measure here. In Gounod's Ave Maria, we hear this chord, the, the, the bass goes through the G. And we hear that C minor chord there, the bass through the G before going to the A flat. And that just makes this transition a bit smoother and easier for his melody to sing on top of this. So anyway, going back to the piece, F sharp fully diminished, jumping onto B fully diminished chord. And that B will arrive on the dominant in the dominant pedal here. A pedal point in music is any moment where we're going to accumulate some, some momentum. Um, a dominant pedal point will accumulate a lot of momentum and it generally will lead to a big climax and this is where, where we're headed to. So we start with the G7 and that pedal point, that bass in G will stay there. The chords on top will change and that G will not affect them. So we are now in measure 24, G7, dominant chord to C, moving on to C major. And now a G suspended, G7 suspended, but why suspended? I have a G, I have a C, I have a D, and I have an F. The suspension is right here on the C and the D. This, this dissonance creates a suspension that wants to resolve that C resolves down to the B, resolving that suspension, that tension that was created when the G went up, when the B went up to the C, and then resolves down to the B. And sure enough, after this measure with the suspension, that C will go down to the B, resolving that suspension. And now we expect to hear now the C major chord, but Bach will move on to an F sharp form. Secondary dog. 